Bloodborne is among the most cherished games of its generation, and today it's a surprise to find it's now very playable on PC via emulation, at last fixing several limits in the original PlayStation 4 code. This is a big deal for a few reasons, because a decade on from its PS4 release, Bloodborne is distinctive for having never received any form of remaster, port, or even a PS5 patch update. As a result, in playing the game on PS5 hardware via back-compat, we're very much locked to its original PS4 settings. We keep the same 30 frames per second cap, complete with uneven frame pacing, while image quality suffers in the upscale to 4K displays by rendering at a native 1080p resolution with obvious aliasing in view. Truly, the game would benefit from even a minor update on modern systems, even to tweak its resolution and frame rate, but so far nothing is forthcoming. Thanks to recent advances in PlayStation 4 emulation though, via the Shad PS4 emulator on PC shown here, there's a promising DIY solution in the frame today. As you can see, Shad PS4's latest builds have gone from strength to strength, and as of version 0.51, the game is almost entirely playable crash-free start to end. Also, at last, 60 frames per second is now viable, while this emulation approach also opens the gates to other enhancements via reshade mods, texture boosts, improved lighting, and much more. In particular, the Bloodborne Remaster Project mod by author from SoftServe adds a great many enhancements, all in one tidy package. So then, just how is Bloodborne's emulation shaping up today, as a means to hit 60fps? Some rough edges are a given seeing that it's still work in progress, but what's the outlook so far? And, as a bonus, how far reaching are the visual enhancements? Let's find out. Before we get into it, let's take a quick look at the setup. Shad PS4 version 0.51 is in use here, via a custom branch from developer Raphael the Great and put together by Diego Lix29. I experimented with multiple different builds to find one that ran in a stable fashion, and ultimately, this one works best for my R7 5700X machine paired with an RTX 4080. The only tweak I'd regard as crucial is this mod, the Vertex Explosion Fix. Installing this sadly disables customization to your character's face in the creation tool at the start, which is, right now, a cause for visual bugs without the mod in place. Otherwise, you'll often see these huge bursts of geometry spilling from your character's face without this fix. Beyond that though, everything you might need is included in the emulator itself. The essential bit being this patch menu, which allows 60fps gameplay to be toggled on, plus 60fps cloth physics, and even res boosts at increments going up to 4K. It also gives us a means to remove chromatic aberration post-processing, which was fairly heavy-handed on the PS4 release, and perhaps not to everyone's taste. For the purposes of testing then, I removed that effect, and settled for 1152p for a small resolution boost, with 60fps in place. Let's hit the nail on the head to start with frame rate testing. Achieving 60fps is a dream come true for Bloodborne fans, and I'm glad to say that emulation is making serious headway in turning that into a reality. The 30fps cap with uneven frame pacing is a famous or even infamous bugbear on its native PS4 release, and if an official remaster were ever to appear, 60fps is easily top of the feature wishlist. In practice then, the Shad PS4 emulator goes to great lengths in keeping 60 locked down, especially on this latest build. The key stress point is this central Yarnam town square with multiple enemies, and for great portions of play here, it does hit the mark. Between my system's RTX 4080 and R7 5700X, it's more often the latter part, the CPU, that's the bottleneck it seems, the result being these sporadic lurches down to the mid-40s. These drops tend to kick in during rapid world traversal or on first striking an enemy, though often restores to 60fps a few seconds later. Tellingly, the Reva Tuna overlay shows a single CPU core is often being overloaded at these moments, spiking to 100%. Dropping the resolution to 1080p or lower doesn't improve this, and I've also tried multiple builds of Shad PS4 and mods as well to improve it. 
Still, the game is certainly playable a bulk of the time at 60fps now, and things can only get better with this as a base. It's a huge improvement also over the previous 0.50 build of Shad PS4 in terms of overall performance and avoiding crashes. The rapid rate of improvement between Shad PS4 builds inspires some confidence. For perspective, here's how the game ran just one patch increment ago on my system on Shad PS4 version 0.5. As we enter central Yarnum, we dipped into the 50s with a single CPU core being constantly maxed out. The frequency of visual bugs and crashes was much higher on 0.5 as well, and thankfully version 0.51 today fixes most of these issues. 60fps is much more of a constant figure. We get full sound. All visuals are intact as well from the PS4 version, and the boost to 1152p is a nice bonus helping to quell the aliasing. Interestingly, there's options of course to push to even higher resolutions. 1440p is the next rung up the ladder, and while the image quality upgrade stands out immediately, it does sadly crash after a few minutes on my system. Bumping that to an even more ambitious 1800p using the patch menu, we get an even more pristine, beautifully crisp image. This takes a predictably greater toll on my system however, putting us right in the mid-40s during play and, again, eventually leads to a crash in my experience. Your mileage may vary, of course, but the general recommendation from my view is PS4's native 1080p will get the best results, while at a push, 1152p works well too. Much of this is still work in progress of course, and results will depend on your chosen build and PC setup. In fact, in trying to troubleshoot some of my lingering frame rate dips, a member of the Digital Foundry Patreon named iExplosiveRage kindly reached out to offer some tips. Thanks and full credit goes their way for suggesting the Vertex Explosion fix, and also the Shad PS4 build I ended up using. I Explosive Rage also sent footage of the game running even more optimally using an Intel 12600K CPU, an RTX 4080, and 32GB of RAM. Targeting 60fps on this system, looking at the Reaver Tuner stats at the top left, we're easily hitting the top line in this case. Through all of the opening central Yarnum areas, each boss, it all flows with only the occasional blip. All of which is to say, it is very much feasible to get that lock with just the right setup and correct build. Impressively, in running the game unlocked to 120 frames per second, we're even seeing that figure rise to 90fps or so in certain moments. It's impressive to see it all flowing so smoothly, even if some trial and error is needed to get there. Next up, the mods and visual upgrades give us a way to further enhance the experience. For a true remastered take on Bloodborne, we'd expect more than just the bare bones res and frame rate boost of course. Taking the mod route then, there are several great optional upgrades offered on Nexus mods, and chief among them is the Bloodborne Remaster project by FromSoftServe. Now on version 0.83, this adds everything from dynamic shadow casting across the game, improved textures in spots, better shadow and texture LODs, plus improved temporal anti-aliasing, replacing the game's FXAA. In later areas, there's even occasional uses of parallax occlusion maps, not enabled in the official game. Added to this, the same author offers a reshade profile, allowing for a simulated ray-traced GI and improved ambient occlusion. These may not be to everyone's tastes, admittedly, and many of these reshade tweaks can be toggled on the left side overlay as you play. But just to show an example of what's possible, I've used this reshade profile exactly as presented by the author. The result then, in comparison with the base PS4 version, is often impressive. In my view, standing out above all else is the additional light points and shadow casting added with the Remaster Project mod. In walking directly through central Yarnum streets, we now get more environmental shadows via the mod, cast from buildings and objects occluding the sun or moon. 
it adds a more detailed shadow to the roads. And likewise, we have extra light points, casting shadows from our character in other areas. Anti-aliasing is improved too, and while this isn't 100% noise free, the mod does help minimize the distracting flicker on grates and grills during motion. Plus, to round out, the reshade profile's addition of improved ambient occlusion also visibly adds more thorough shading around interiors. The only downside to all of this, especially in using reshade, is that inevitably we incur a frame rate penalty, and in my case, drops under 60 are much more regular. In this case, the 30fps option is a good safety net for a more consistent frame time, and in my experience, runs with only minimal frame pacing issues. Again, all of this is work in progress, but what progress it is. That PS4 emulation is possible at all is an incredible feat by the team behind Shad PS4, and it appears the absence of an official Bloodborne remaster is helping to galvanize the movement. It's become a real point of focus for fans of the game, to see if it's simply possible. Yes, there are imperfections with Bloodborne's emulation on PC today, and there are outstanding crashes, but the state of it right now is still very encouraging. At the very least, it demonstrates the direction we'd want an official remaster to move in. Improving the frame rate and resolution are just the start. Pushing out the draw distances, improving the lighting, textures, and anti-aliasing are all good ideas we'd love to see in a final product. As a proof of concept then, Shad PS4 works beautifully, and if you're inclined to run through the setup, it's shaping up to be a genuinely playable take on Bloodborne. That's all for today though. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video and many more, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But from me for now, thanks for watching.